Good morning. How are you doing today? The Humble Apple. They make fantastic wine. It's not just cider they can make from apples, but apple wine is amazing. There are so many varieties of apple out there, from the Humble Granny Smith to your Windblush ones. They all add different flavours to your wine, so it experiments. If you have a tree in your garden, lucky you, use them. Use your windfall apples, use your... Go strumping, go strumping around your neighbours, find the apples. The flavours and the variety of apples will add great depth to your wines. So try and use a mixture of different types of apple. There are various different methods of making apple wine. One is you can juice the apples, as you would do a cider, but I like to make my wine on the pulp, which basically means chunk up your apples and then you pour over your boiling water and let the peptic enzyme and the yeast extract all the flavour and nutrients. First thing we need to do is prepare your apples. So what you want to do is remove any bad bits of the apple, any bruises, any mouldy bits. Just use a simple knife, cut them out and add them to your compost heap. You don't want any of the mouldy bits in your apples because this will attract wild yeast and mould to your wine. You want your wine to ferment using yeast, but ideally only the yeast you add to it. Now, you can make wine using wild yeast, that's a different matter, but you don't want mould. Mould is bad. Mould is very bad when it comes to wine. So to start, all of those gone off manky bits. Once you've gone through all your apples, removing any bad bits, you want to aim to be left with about three to four kilos of good apple. This will create a lovely, full-bodied, fragrant, tasty wine. If you have less apples, if you had removed more than you thought, it will still make a great wine with about two kilos of apples. But I tend to like a, a fuller-bodied wine. So I'm aiming for about three, three and a half kilos of apple. Then comes the fun bit of chunking your apples into little chunks. The smaller, the better, because the bigger the surface area, the more they extract the juice and the flavour and all that lovely delicious sugar. You don't need to peel your apples because a load of the flavour, nutrients and sugar is just below the peel. But you may want to remove the seeds if you're worried about that tiny, tiny, tiny bit of arsenic that they contain. Personally, I don't think it's worth worrying about. Once you've chopped all of your apples and you have about three to four kilos worth, you want to put them into a clean laundry bag. You can buy these online, you can buy these from your local pound store, Poundland, Deals, whatever it might be. Dirt cheap. Normally throw in a pack and they're great for not only keeping your socks together, but they're great as well for keeping all of your fruit together when you ferment in a big bucket. It just saves the pieces of apple getting stuck up your siphon. No one likes that, do they? A bit of apple up your siphon. No, 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 no. Make sure it's clean, sterilised. I have mine in boiling water just now. If you don't have a laundry cloth or you can't find one, you can also use a cheesecloth. They work just as well. That said, you want to put all of your chopped apple into your bag. Fantastic. Add the whole bag with the apple in into your fermenting bag. And now it's time to prepare your sugar. Oh yes. This recipe calls for 1.3 kilos of sugar. I'm using 500 grams of dark soft brown sugar. I find that the nuttiness of the brown sugar really brings out a great deal of extra flavour to the apples. It almost becomes a caramelised toffee apple flavour in a wine. It really complements a load of dishes. So 500 grams of dark brown sugar and 800 grams of your white sugar. Fantastic. So get those weighed out. And pour over your apples. You also want to add a good squirt of lemon juice. About one lemon's worth. So a really good pour if you use bottles or 
the juice of a whole lemon if you're using lemons. I'm using the juice from the bottle because I'm keeping these lemons for a lemon wine that's coming up soon. Oh yes. Pour away. And you also want to add one tea bag, one normal tea bag. None of this herbal fruity stuff. I've made fruity tea bag wine before. It's a good drop of wine. You really want to be using a normal tea bag because that adds a lot of the tannins that you need for this recipe, for the apple wine to really be brilliant. Next step is to put the kettle on and cover with about four litres of boiling water. Scrumpy. And then give it a really good stir to dissolve all of that sugar and get the juice and tea bag all mixed in. Fantastic. Oh, the toffee apple fragrance is really coming through. Delicious. And now it's simply a case of waiting. Waiting till it cools down to lukewarm room temperature. So drop the kettle on, have a cup of tea and join me in a few seconds now. Back in a minute. <laughs> The apple wine has been allowed to cool down to room temperature, maybe just above, a bit lukewarm, tepid, and it's smelling divine it is. It's given off a really great aroma. It reminds me of toffee apples, it's sweet, it's sticky, it's... That brown sugar has really helped to bring out this nutty toffee aroma to it. I can't wait to try this. What we need to do now is add some petalase, which really helps to break down the apples. There's peptic enzyme in apples and you really need to add some petalase, which is a chemical that offsets that peptic enzyme to prevent a peptic haze forming in your wine. If you don't add this stuff, you could end up with a bit of a hazy wine. It's perfectly fine, perfectly safe if you don't add this. It just means that the clarity of your wine isn't going to be as sparkly as if you didn't. It's only cheap and it does make your wine that much better. So why not add a teaspoon to your wine if you're using a high peptic enzyme fruit, such as berries, apples, hard fruits. There's a whole list and I'll give a link down below to all the fruits and vegetables you should use petalase with when you in your wine making. So just add a teaspoon per gallon into your bucket. And also add your yeast. I'm using a high alcohol dessert wine yeast because I think the toffee flavour of the toffee apple wine would really, really make a delicious dessert wine. It has the flavour, it can carry the alcohol strength. So you just want to open up your sachet or open up your tub if you're using a tub of generic yeast. You don't have to use a high alcohol wine yeast, any wine yeast would work. It's just my preference to use this type of wine yeast in this type of wine. But choose whichever wine yeast you want to use. Anyway, open up your sachet, sprinkle it in, fantastic. And then give it a really good stir. You want to get that net with those apples in all submerged right the way under the liquid. Keep on pushing it down and give it a really good stir. The yeast and the petalase will break down the apples, extract all their flavour, all the juice and all the goodness. Put a lid on it, attach an airlock, set it aside in a warm place for a week and let it ferment away. You want to stir it daily, every day of the week, maybe twice a day if you have the time, and let the yeast and the petalase eat away at the apples, break them down, release all their goodness, and then Come and join me. I'll wait for my time. Or a second in this video. See you soon. Well, hello you. That was a very quick week for you, wasn't it, eh? Only felt like a second. Anyway, the toffee apple wine is looking amazing, it is. Fantastic. The apples have been stewing in the liquid all week. I've been giving it a stir every day, 
submerging the apple pieces and it is looking and smelling divine. Fantastic. Anyway, shall we have a look? Oh yeah, you're excited. One of the beauties of using a mesh bag is that it's so easy to hoik out and pull out and extract all the pieces of apple or fruit you've been using. That's right, reach in, pull it out. It saves putting it through a sieve and having all those little pieces left over. Shall we pull? Reach in, hey, hey, dear boy. You want to let your net drip drain, but don't squeeze it. You don't want any mush going into your wine. <laughs> Once it's drip drained, you want to put it into a pot ready to throw onto your compost heap and hoik out that tea bag as well that's been in there all week. I have filled all of my glass demijohns. Not bad. I mean, it's, that's not too good. It's not too bad either. I like having them more full. I'm going to be using a five litre plastic water bottle. I don't mind fermenting in plastic, but I like to mature my wines in glass. I think we better get this filled up. So it's going to be a simple case. I'll find a funnel, pour it in, and make sure that there are no apple pieces in it. My boy has run off with that one. He's going to use it as a toy. Good job I have a spare. I always have a few of these in stock. They make great toys and they're so handy for your wine as well. So grab your water bottle or demijohn and your phone straight in there and then pour in your apple wine mix. Fantastic. Couldn't be easier, could it? Wow. The colour is so rich the texture and consistency of the liquid is really thick at the moment. But that's just the apple pulp giving off bits of fibre. But that would drop down in time and it would clear out to be a beautiful clear sparkling white wine. These caps are amazing. They fit standard 5 litre water bottles and they come pre-drilled, pre-bored with a grommet in. They fit the bottles, they fit standard airlocks and they are cheap as chips. And it's a really easy way of converting a five litre water bottle into a demijohn. As I said earlier, I don't mind fermenting in plastic. However, I am a bit of a purist and I would rather mature my wines in glass demijohns. So these are great for the initial stage of fermentation. The link to these wonderful little caps is down below in the description. I love them. They are great to have a half dozen or so on standby for those times when you do fill up all of your demijohns. Right then, you simply screw it on, then you're good to attach your air dock. Set it aside in a warm place, let it ferment and bubble away to its heart's content. The sediment will drop, the sugar will turn into alcohol, then all you need to do, rack it off, let it mature in a glass demijohn or even a plastic demijohn, if you so wish. Why don't you check out some other country wine videos I've made? A whole playlist worth loads of ideas and inspiration for you. See you soon, have fun.